There are industrial worlds that we think are reserved for the initiated, but which reveal a fascinating beauty and precision as soon as we take the time to observe and understand them. What you are about to discover here is one of those fields where the power of machines and human rigor unite to transform raw materials into forms of impressive precision. If you pay attention until the end, you will see how each step of this metallic journey fits into the next to give birth to creations that seem almost impossible to conceive, so perfect do they appear. Bending steel plates always begins with careful preparation to ensure a perfectly cylindrical and flawless result. A flat steel plate is prepared with a slight excess length on each side. This excess length is essential because it allows for precise edge preparation so that the steel can be rolled into a perfectly round shape. The edges of the plate are carefully chamfered to provide ideal welding conditions, a step that requires extreme precision to achieve a uniform and robust cylinder. After this chamfering, the plate is precisely marked to guide the cutting operations. This marking task ensures a perfect fit during final assembly. To facilitate clean cutting of the steel, the plate is preheated to an optimal temperature, which reduces internal stresses and prevents cracks. The result is a clean cut where the excess is removed and the weld edges are already formed. Once this step is completed, the plate is fed into a 320-ton Swiss rolling machine a true mechanical monster designed to transform a flat plate into a perfect 276 mm diameter cylinder. The machine exerts a colossal but perfectly controlled force, ensuring a regular curvature without altering the structural integrity of the steel. Once the cylindrical shell is obtained, it is prepared for welding. The welds are made using the submerged arc method, which allows for very fast and consistent deposition thanks to the use of two filler wires simultaneously. A protective flux covers the welding area preserving the quality of the bath. Any excess is recovered and reused, demonstrating an approach that is both efficient and environmentally friendly. The welded shell is thus remarkably robust and suitable for the most demanding industrial environments. But the show doesn't end there, because in the same facility is a press brake capable of exerting up to 3,000 tons of pressure on 8-meter long plates, one of the most powerful in Europe. This colossal machine can bend stainless steel plates 60 millimeters thick and 7.2 m long, giving them precise radii according to the needs of the projects. Each bend is a demonstration of strength and technical mastery. And since sometimes it's necessary to go even further, a 43-ton steel plate, 150 mm thick and 2,230 mm wide, can be bent into a 5,000 mm diameter cylinder, an operation that illustrates the extreme capacity of this extraordinary equipment. Every phase, from edge preparation, preheating, cutting, rolling, welding to pressing, is carried out with absolute coordination and rigor that guarantees the reliability of the final pieces. And this is where I pause to tell you something important. If you enjoy learning about these unique industrial processes and want to support the creation of this kind of content, simply click subscribe and activate the bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. I assure you that what you're about to see next is definitely worth staying tuned in. The manufacturing of pressure vessels begins with the selection and preparation of steel pipes and plates. The pipes are cut to precise lengths using automated machines, and each piece is then numbered and marked to ensure complete traceability during assembly. Welds are made using rod and MIG processes. Rod is preferred for fine detail and precision, while MIG provides strength and speed. Each joint is welded from the inside and outside to ensure perfect resistance to high pressures. After welding, the parts are assembled with a precise fit to ensure the tank is completely reliable. Then, laser technology comes into play. Laser markings engrave and code the covers, ensuring traceability and facilitating quality control. Laser cutting then shapes precise openings to accommodate pipes, valves, or sensors, limiting additional finishing. These cut plates are then folded by three roller machines to form perfectly fitted cylinders for subsequent assembly. Each step is accompanied by strict quality controls based on European regulations, so that the final products can be used safely in the chemical, pharmaceutical, and food industries. The manufacture of welded beams begins with digital nesting, which optimizes plate cutting to reduce waste. CNC plasma or oxyfuel cutting then produces elements with exact dimensions. These pieces are deburred and ground to remove any defects, then they are tack welded to maintain their alignment before complete welding. Cuts and adjustments are made to ensure a perfect fit, 
then the welders continue to create solid beams that meet structural standards. A gouging process cleans the welds and prepares the areas requiring correction. Finally, a mechanical or thermal straightening process ensures the beam's straightness. Quality controllers check the straightness, dimensions, and finish before approving the final product. In heavy-duty steel mills, steel slabs are heated in furnaces to rolling temperature and then passed between powerful rollers that reduce their thickness and give them the desired dimensions. Steel piles are formed in specialized rolling mills, which give them interlocking profiles suitable for foundations. Oxyfuel and plasma cutting are used to create complex shapes according to customer drawings, and each piece is then deburred and inspected. Ductility tests on spherical blanks are performed using hydraulic presses that apply progressive force to form rounded edges and assess the strength of the metals. The 4.5-meter dished heads are formed by cold singeing on forming machines equipped with powerful rollers that gradually descend onto the rotating part. This method ensures high precision even on large parts. At CAH Bastille, a heavy-duty forge produces ingots of up to 600 tons thanks to 150-ton electric arc furnaces, vacuum degassing, and 13,000-ton hydraulic presses capable of shaping gigantic parts for the energy, nuclear, and marine industries. The 60-ton electric arc furnace melts scrap metal using electric arcs between graphite electrodes, generating temperatures exceeding 3,000 degrees Celsius, enabling efficient and sustainable recycling. Spiral boxes for hydroelectric power plants are machined, welded, straightened, and heat treated to ensure dimensional accuracy and mechanical strength. Hydraulic rollers weighing almost 900 tons bend 70 mm thick and 4.5 m wide plates with perfect regularity thanks to CNC control. The four roll double nip machines produce cones and cylinders with exceptional precision. 750 ton mechanical presses form spherical plates for large capacity tanks, ensuring regular, standard compliant curvatures. Ultrasonic tube inspections continuously measure wall thickness using frame and ceframe systems that guarantee perfect homogeneity. At every stage, continuous dimensional monitoring allows for immediate correction of any variation and delivery of products that meet the most demanding standards. This journey to the heart of steel transformation demonstrates how the power of the machines, the rigor of the operators, and technological innovation combine to create gigantic yet surgically precise parts. If you enjoyed this immersion into the world of monumental machines and incredible industrial processes, don't forget to subscribe and like this video because what awaits you right after is even more impressive and absolutely deserves you to stay until the end. Behind every bill you hold in your hands lies a fascinating, often overlooked story of almost scientific precision. Much more than just a medium of exchange, each banknote is a masterpiece of technology, design, and security. It all begins with a surprising fact, US banknotes are not made of paper. They are crafted from a precise blend of 75% cotton and 25% linen. This unique mix gives them their recognizable texture and exceptional resistance to wear and tear. But that's only the beginning. From the very first stage of production, random security features are embedded directly into the material itself. Tiny red and blue fibers, invisible at first glance, but permanently woven into the fabric. As denominations increase, so does the complexity. Higher value bills contain ultraviolet security threads that glow under UV light, each denomination shining with its own unique signature. Then comes special ink designed to shift color depending on the viewing angle, an added layer of security and sophistication. These seemingly tiny details all serve one crucial mission, making counterfeiting nearly impossible. Each glance at a bill actually reveals a work of high precision, perfected over decades. If these hidden secrets intrigue you, and if every detail sparks your curiosity, then don't waste a second. Subscribe, hit the bell, and get ready to be amazed by the unseen stories behind everyday objects. The creation of a bill begins long before printing. Specialized artists hand draw every element, portraits, lettering patterns, before they are engraved onto steel plates using a tool called a pantograph. Every curve and every line is reproduced with surgical precision. These engraved elements are then combined like a puzzle through a process known as siderography, which transfers them onto a master printing plate. 
From this plate, hundreds of copies are made for mass production. The $100 bill for instance, contains a unique 3D blue security ribbon embedded directly into the paper. When tilted, the printed patterns appear to move, a powerful safeguard against counterfeiting. Even more impressive is the microprinting, microscopic words and phrases hidden in places like the portrait's collar or the edges of numbers, invisible to the naked eye without magnification. Starting with a $2 bill, offset printing is added. This multi-layer process deposits multiple colors on both sides in a single pass. Y. The $1 bill is the only exception, going straight to intaglio printing, where high-pressure presses add raised details like portraits, numbers, and official seals. This tactile texture is nearly impossible to replicate. After printing, bills are far from finished. They receive serial numbers, seals from the Federal Reserve and Treasury, and in higher denominations, color shifting inks. Every bill passes under ultra high speed cameras capable of scanning 25 sheets per second, front and back, detecting even the tiniest flaw. Defective bills are removed, while valid ones are saved. This ensures that every note entering circulation meets strict quality standards. Sheets are then cut by automated guillotines into the exact standard size, 6.14 by 2.61 inches. Bills are stacked in bricks of 100 banded, and packed into metal cases called skids. At this stage, they are still not in circulation, they remain the property of the Federal Reserve. Some can stay locked away for years before being released to banks, credit unions, and ATMs. If a bill is suspected of being counterfeit, the US Secret Service steps in to protect the nation's financial integrity. Coins may seem simpler, but their creation is equally fascinating. Each begins with raw materials, copper-plated zinc for pennies, cupronickel for other denominations. Long metal strips are punched into blanks, then heated to 950 degrees Celsius in a process called annealing to make them malleable. Blanks are cleaned, dried, and edged using an upsetting machine before moving to the striking stage. Here, massive presses applying up to 560 tons of pressure imprint the designs on both sides. Some coins require multiple strikes to achieve sharp details. Each coin is inspected, defective ones are discarded, while the rest are weighed, counted, rolled, and shipped to Federal Reserve Banks, ready to circulate. But money production is not without controversy. It costs between 3 and 6 cents to mint a single penny, over three times its actual value. By comparison, a $100 bill costs only 16.25 cents to produce. Environmental concerns have also been raised, chemical leaks from minting facilities, such as those in Philadelphia, have contaminated surrounding soil and groundwater. Safety inspections have uncovered dozens of failures, and counterfeit coins, often of foreign origin, have entered circulation in recent years. So the next time you hold a bill or coin, look at it differently. It's not just money, it's the result of centuries of craftsmanship combined with advanced technology. An everyday object, yes, but also a fusion of science, art, and history. And who knows? Maybe the bill or coin you hold today will one day be worth far more than the number printed on it. Have you ever wondered how this video you're watching right now actually gets to you? That simple act of pressing play triggers an invisible but incredibly sophisticated process. The video has traveled thousands of kilometers from a data center, a highly secure place filled with powerful servers. That's where colossal amounts of data are stored, including the very video you're watching. And this data center could be located hundreds, even thousands of kilometers away from your home, making this digital journey all the more fascinating. So, how do these digital data travel across the planet to appear on your phone or laptop screen? At first, you might think it's sent by satellite. The idea seems simple, a signal goes up from the data center to a satellite and then comes back down to an antenna near you. But here's the problem, geostationary satellites are nearly 35,400 kilometers above Earth, meaning the round trip is about 70,800 kilometers. That distance causes huge latency. Such delays would make browsing, streaming videos, or playing online games nearly impossible. That's why this video is not transmitted via satellite. 
Instead, it uses a much more efficient and widespread system, a vast network of fiber optic cables that connects the data center directly to your device. These cables stretch across oceans, mountains, cities, and villages. Whether your phone connects through mobile data or Wi-Fi, in the end, it always ties back into this worldwide wired network. Inside the data center, the video is stored on an SSD, which acts like the internal memory of a server. The server itself is a very powerful computer designed to send you the video you requested. The real challenge begins when that data has to travel to you through the fiber network. But before understanding this journey, we need to talk about the most fundamental element of the internet, the IP address. Every device connected to the internet, computers, smartphones, servers, has a unique IP address. It works like a postal address, ensuring each piece of data reaches its exact destination. Your internet provider assigns you a specific IP, just as the data center server has its own. Technically, you could access any website by typing its IP address. But since no one can memorize all those numbers, we use domain names like youtube.com or facebook.com. These names are linked to IP addresses through the DNS system, which works like a global phone book. You type in the site's name, and the DNS automatically finds the correct IP. Your browser then sends a request to the data center server, and that's the moment the video begins its journey. The video doesn't travel as text or images, but as binary data, zeros and ones. These binary signals are sent as pulses of light through fiber optic cables, later converted into electrical signals. If you're on a wired connection, the signal comes via Ethernet cable. If you're on mobile data, they go through a cell tower, transformed into electromagnetic waves, then sent to your phone. All of this is orchestrated by internet protocols, which dictate how data should be cut, addressed, transmitted, and reassembled. Your video is split into tiny chunks called packets. Each packet contains a piece of the video, a sequence number, and the sending slash receiving IP addresses. Packets don't necessarily take the same path, each follows the fastest route available. Once they reach your device, they're reassembled in the right order. If some packets get lost, your device automatically requests them again. This ensures fast and reliable streaming. Fiber optic cables can even cross entire oceans, laid down by specialized ships that dig trenches on the seabed. Once installed, these cables connect continents, and they're constantly protected, maintained, and monitored by major international companies. They are literally the backbone of the internet. From the seabed, they reach the coasts, connect to terrestrial networks, then to your internet provider, and finally to your router, until they reach your screen. This global system is coordinated by organizations like ICANN, based in the US. They manage IP addresses, domain names, and the structure of the global web. Thanks to this organization, the internet functions uniformly across the entire planet. The true power of the internet lies not just in its speed, but in its resilience, precision, and adaptability. Every video you watch is the result of a worldwide system operating in just milliseconds. It's a technological masterpiece made possible by smart protocols, powerful servers, and lightning-fast cables. So next time you hit play, think about the incredible journey every single bit of that video made to reach you.